Ross Ulbricht, the um, supposed conspirator slash kingpin slash, you know, um, uh, leader of Silk Road, the anonymous um, marketplace that got shut down last year by the feds. Um, his trial is coming up in November. And while he already had uh, four or five serious charges against him for operating the website, um, the government has tacked on three additional charges to his case. And um, these charges include narcotics trafficking, distribution of narcotics by means of the internet, and conspiracy to traffic fraudulent identification documents. So with these charges, I mean, these don't really apply to people who aren't involved directly with that crime. So basically the government is saying that uh, Ross Ulbricht personally trafficked narcotics and distributed narcotics over the internet and, you know, and also trafficked uh, fake IDs through the internet himself, um, which nothing we know so far no evidence we know so far says that that is even true. Even if he is the leader of Silk Road, um, playing devil's advocate, even if he is uh, convicted of that, like that, that wouldn't mean that he himself personally ever touched a single package of drugs or fake IDs. Um, do you? What do you? What do you think about this, Evan? Um, I think. I think they're just uh, they're basically just trying to cover their bases. You know, they want to make sure that he's going to go away no matter what, uh, regardless of whether or not he actually did it. If he go if he goes free, um, it would be considered you know a victory for the black market. You know, a, another detrimental blow to the drug war. Um, so they have to put him away no matter what, or they're they're going to hurt their image. So that, that's really what all this is. They're just slinging anything they can at him uh, that might lead to some extra jail time yeah. or as a backup if he doesn't get convicted on the main charges. Yeah, they're just throwing like everything at him. They're throwing the kitchen sink at him, hoping that something sticks. Um, they're... they're they're afraid, I guess. They're afraid that they that they might not get him with the original charges. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Um, because, you know, why didn't they just charge him with these things at the same time? You know, it kind of seems like they're, they've they been keeping this in their pocket in case they need it. Um, you know, in, in case their in case their original charges weren't as strong as they hoped they were. They can yeah. just throw this at him. Um, and, you know, Ross Ulbricht's attorney, uh, not attorney said that he even, he even said the same things that we're saying. Um, he, he's saying these, these additional charges simply demonstrate the government's uh, penchant for converting a single alleged course of conduct into a series or into a set of multiple similar interchangeable charges in an effort to improve its chances of of having a jury overwhelmed by the sheer number of charges agree with the government on at least one. Um, you know, so this isn't just us, you know, two lowly, you know, Bitcoin writers. This is Ross Ulbricht's attorney saying that, you know, the government is just trying to cover its bases. They're, they're doing everything they can to put um, DPR away. Yep. Yeah, they've got a lot going against them. I mean, the the original charges were drug trafficking, money laundering, computer hacking, and for serving as the kingpin on a drug trafficking enterprise. So, <laughs> did he traffic drugs? Did he launder money? Did he hack computers? Well, may, you know, maybe not. But if those charges don't stick, they're hoping that maybe one of the extra ones will at least. And Joshua Dray Draytel notices that, and like they. There's no additional evidence that was submitted. Um, that, like, there's nothing else that the defense can can find in discovery that, like, you know, supports these additional charges. Uh, th like, the government is just tacking them on as possible, like, tangent charges that that might kind of be applicable, maybe. Um, but 
then you, that's for the jury to decide if, if they're applicable or not. And the jury jury might agree. Uh, a jury is made up of flawed human beings who um, often aren't familiar with the complex technology behind things like Bitcoin and darknet marketplaces. So, you know, if the jury doesn't understand um, these uh, these mechanisms uh, exactly as how they actually work, then it might actually seem to them, based on the prosecution's um, case, that Ross Ulbricht did personally, you know, like maybe send out packages directly from his house or whatever, or, you know, or like take take the computer hacking charge for instance um that's not actually they're not actually saying that that ross himself hacked computers it's that you know things were sold on the marketplace that helped other hackers uh hack computers you know documents and and stuff like that that would that would help them to hack into things so um you know i guess the defense will just have to try and make that as clear as possible to the jury and the prosecution is going to do its best to make it seem that Ross Ulbricht himself was so personally involved in all of these things. Um, and it's, 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 uh, it's a weird thing about the U.S. Uh, court system, how, you know, we, you, got, you got these two opposing sides who, like, each one, especially the prosecution, can w try to warp facts in their, in their favor as much as possible. And lawyers are very good at, you know, kind of warping the truth a little bit to, to fit their agenda and um, trying to convince like a, a, a panel of like 10 people or so to agree with them. And if they agree, then Ross Ulbricht goes to jail for yep. probably the rest of his life. And that's that. Well, do you think, um, you know, I just, I just had this idea. Do you think maybe that... Uh, they could also just be trying to scare Ross. Scare Ross personally? Him? Yeah, like scaring him into changing his plea to to guilty to oh. so he'll take a lesser charge. Because, you know, they're, they're throwing all these things at him. Like, maybe they could just be trying to say, like, look, we're... No, we're gonna get you no matter what you could but you could always like give in to us and work with us and you know we'll give you a lesser sentence because they do you know they do that a lot yeah you know I think that that might be part of it that they're trying to just scare the crap out of him and, and see if he would be willing to to uh, settle or, or whatever but I don't think he would uh, every everything no. that I've heard from his attorney and also from his mom, like his mom did a really great speech for for the New Hampshire Free State Project, and uh, she's pretty determined to make sure that they do everything possible to to make sure that he doesn't go to jail. They're putting yeah, up like a good this, fight. Like this is this has gone far beyond just like a normal trial. You know, it's it's really become um, an ideological battle. Uh, not just not just a, um, you know, but about government tier hate to say tyranny because i don't want to sound like a tinfoil hat guy but right like you know, oppression yeah like like or you know um violation like of civil government, rights government government overstepping its bounds you know it, it's it's just become a real ideological battle uh and so i don't think i don't think Ulbricht is really going to back down because he probably he probably has kind of has a sense that this is happening in the outside world um, so he's definitely going to stand up no matter what. Yeah. He's, he's putting up the good fight and, um, you know, I'll be, I'll be watching the trial cl closely. I'm sure a lot of people in the community will be, uh, when it starts in, on November 3rd. Um, it'll be really interesting to see, you know, I wish we could, we would be able to watch like a TV, like a, a video feed or something, like a live stream, or yeah. uh, that'd be awesome of the trial. But I don't think that's going to happen. The most we might get in terms of trial coverage is maybe like a like a daily uh, summary from a reporter who might be in the courtroom yeah. uh, summarizing the events. And they occasionally have those sketch artists who you know draw the <laughs> the defendants and stuff. So yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting to see what happens.